back to the rest of the story. I'm in what seems to be everybody's favorite tractor on our farm, and that is the 4640. Uh, she's been kind of quiet so far this fall. She's been running the grain cart, of course. But um, I just want to give you guys uh, like a left to right of everything that is in here and what it takes to run the tractor as far as the controls. Um, first and foremost, uh, they pretty well speak for themselves, but uh, we got the clutch, we got the differential lock, we have the left and the right rear brakes, uh, PTO shaft or power takeoff. Um, a little bit different than the one that was in the 7600. Um, like the 76 just has the pull dial and then you turn it. Um, this one is just a push lever and you can slowly engage it uh, when you're like with the grain cart, especially back when we were chopping. Our 4440 is set up. This is literally a copy and a paste of what our 4440 was. And same thing when you go to start the chopper, you want to engage everything slowly and you're not just jamming it into gear and potentially causing excessive damage. So that <clears throat> that is what that is really good for. Uh, somebody was asking me about a 4440 again and if we would we would ever buy another 4440. Uh, yes, we would. Uh, the only problem that I have with that, I mean, I really would like one or even like a 4430, um, but to find one that's in decent condition that hasn't just been, had the life completely ran out of it, um, and also that has been taken care of, you start getting into the better quality machines like that, that um, would be more worthwhile to buying, you're getting pretty expensive. Uh, these, like the four, a 4440, the last I heard, they're running high 20s, right around that $30,000 at average price for those machines. Um, still within reason, um, but the problem is, is that you're getting up to $30,000. You start getting into that thirty dollars to $40,000 range, you can buy similar horsepower machines. I mean, a 4440 for us would not be used for heavy tillage. It would be a chore tractor. It would be used for the simple things grading the driveways, making hay, uh, maybe running the grain auger, maybe get the, maybe to get the 4020 off the auger quite so much. Um, it wouldn't be used for heavy-duty jobs anymore. And it gets to the point where I could potentially look at buying something a little bit newer for a similar price. Uh, I think it, I know it's not the same number, but I think it was a 4255 front wheel assist and duals. And that only had 20, 2,600 hours on it. Original uh, original owner, uh, those are actual hours, and they're asking just a hair over $60,000 for a machine like that. Well, for $60,000 for a machine like that, I mean, I can go buy a newer machine, similar horse, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, and have something a little bit newer. I know it has the dreaded electronics and everything in it. I'm not really a afraid of the newer equipment as far as the electronics and everything goes um, as far as doing much like in-depth repair work we don't typically do that anymore uh, we used to do well not even really in-depth but we'd used to do like something as like changing the head gasket on i don't remember what it was at the time i mean i was pretty young but Nowadays, we do a lot of the general maintenance, general repairs, but anything that is too in depth, uh, where you got to dig into the machine of the tractor or the depths of the tractor and start opening it up, we don't typically do that. Dirt floor shop, I know plenty of guys do it. Um, we could probably go uh, put a slab of concrete up in the shed and get away with it. Um, but for where we currently are and the repairs that we do typically get, uh, it's almost more beneficial to us just to send it to the dealership and then have it done the suppose the right way i guess you could say plus it comes back with a warranty this had a warranty on it when the transmission went bad uh, we had a, a warranty from the dealer for i think it was a hundred hours and a hundred dollars if it was any faults in repairing the tractor um it would have failed within a hundred hours especially since when we got it back, the first thing we used it for was chisel plowing. So, I mean, it was doing some heavy pulling. So, I got a little off subject there. So, let's get back on topic. We got your gauges here. 
And once again, they pretty well speak for themselves. We got fuel gauge, engine water temp, engine oil pressure, battery voltage, and your transmission, your air filter lights don't typically flash ever. I've never had, even on our 4440 or 4430, I've never had the air filter light come on. I mean, if it's that plugged, um, you're in some serious operating conditions. Um, typical tack. This one is kind of, I'm really not sure how this happened, but this thing is kind of, it's all tore up on the inside. I don't know if it's just wear and tear or what, but I really have no idea. I mean, you can see it's peeling off, but it's irrelevant. We don't usually watch how many, um, you know, miles an hour we're going with that anyway. Basically, it's just road gear wide open. Yeah, uh, ether. We don't have the ether hooked up on this tractor. This tractor has been a really reliable machine when it comes to starting in the cold. Uh, I don't remember the last time I've used ether on this tractor, if I've ever used ether on this tractor. I mean, everybody likes the wonderful cold starts, and that's what this tractor seems to do best. We got your light switch, field lights, highway lights, and just your amber lights, your flashers, um, key switch, kill lever, and your steering wheel adjuster. So, really simple tractors are really not that difficult to figure out. Um, over here, first and foremost, we have everybody's favorite part of this tractor, the favorite lever, and this is your coal maker. Um, it's generally to make to throttle the engine up and blow coal, make some black smoke. Um, really handy, just in case you have some environmentalists around that think you're sorry for hurting the environment you can just you know throw some smoke i joke of course and this is a power quad uh, excuse me a power quad transmission you have your your range lever over here and you have your gear lever right here um, you go from your park right here and you have a b c or d you know d being road gear a being like a working gear um, generally when I'm chisel plowing with this machine, it's usually B1, you know, B and then one and two or C range one and two. It depends what kind of conditions I'm in. Oh, this tractor does not need you to press the clutch between first and second and third and fourth. All you have to do is, uh, I can't exactly move it right now, but all you got to do is push the lever left and right without clutching. The only times you have to clutch are when you're moving the tractor or the gear lever, gear selector, um, vertical. So if you're going here, you got to clutch. If you're going from here to here, if you guys can see that, you have to clutch. Otherwise, um, third and fourth, second and first, and then reverse one and two. Um, it's just a just to push to the lever really simple really convenient especially when you get to heavy pulling or if you have to slow down when you're backing into the shed like i have to do right now so and back here this is your three point le uh, control lever then you have your scvs your selective control valves one two and three i like to typically run everything when i do have it hooked up i usually try to run it on one and three um, largely when I'm running the grain cart so that way you're not trying to lower the arm because this is what the arm is for the auger um, for raising and lowering it and then this is for the the gate for turning the flow of the grain on and off so, this is a very straightforward tractor very reliable it's a very good go-to machine we were asked by the visitor from Brazil his one question for me was why do we plant with the older tractors and why we don't plant with the 8235R is because this cannot pull the 82 or the, the VT as well as the 8235R can. Uh, this tractor pulls that corn planter great. It's a really good match for it. Um, even with that fertilizer tank on, you do feel it back there a little bit, but as you get going and you start getting the, the fertilizer out of it, it really isn't that that hard of a pull. I mean, we don't need the extra hydraulics or anything to run um, like a hydraulic motor or anything or for a fan on the planter. If we ever updated to a bigger planter, like something with CCS, I mean, that would definitely be an issue we have to address. But for right now, uh, we the reason we run everything we run, how we run it is for a reason. There's a, 
there's a reason for the chaos. So the 82 is on the VT for a reason. The 76 ends up on the baler and the disc vine for a reason. The 46 on the corn planter on this cart for a reason. So if you have any questions, just ask. I can generally answer any of your questions about that. But there's a reason why a tractor is designated to this job or to that job. It's, it's because we feel that is how it is set up best or how it works, how it will work best for us. So, yeah. Um, that's a quick go over on how to, how to run a 4640 guys. I don't think I've ever done a, a video like that for you. So yeah. Any other questions? Just let me know. So until next time, I got to get this in because it's, it's really starting to rain. Um, take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys later.